When I think of Judith, it's like putting a banner up that says, I care about our clients who have AIDS. It was just, she was everywhere. It was magical almost. It was like Santa Claus at Christmas. I mean, you just, the two went together. You couldn't talk about the AIDS crisis in the metropolitan area of Oregon without talking about Judith. She was the calling card for that period of time in our history. Judith is a person who can hold the room and she's holding the room for the good of others. Judith is also willing to take herself to very deep and difficult places that a lot of people avoid. Judith has been there for people as they are, were passing when they are in their most difficult times. And that showed up with her work at Our House. I mean, I don't know how many people she's tended to as they've passed. Whenever it was in the 80s, Barbara Roberts was still governor. We had a summer barbecue. She came, she gave a speech, and she said, when I'm no longer a governor, I'm going to come and volunteer at our house. And of course, Judith ran out of the crowd and handed her a card. Call me when you're out of the governor's mansion. And she did. And I came to our house and I was met at the front door by this vivacious, cheerful, wonderful, amazing woman. And she was interviewing me to see if I qualified for the job of volunteer. <laughs> so here was Judith. And I hadn't been interviewed for a long time to see if I was qualified for anything. But she wasn't taking any chances. If someone was going to work at our house, their qualifications mattered, their commitment mattered, their heart mattered, and their behavior mattered. I have been HIV positive for 32 years, and I was diagnosed with AIDS in 1997. And I'm here because of places like CAP and people like Judith Rizzio. Bloodlines is an educational documentary film that is a portrait of young people living with HIV from across the United States. I co-directed it with another HIV positive young woman, and Judith helped an enormous amount with fundraising. Judith did things like help us collect donations for auctions, served on our board, and created ties in the community that were part of the catalyst that made that film happen. And it's thanks to Judith that we have an archive of HIV and AIDS activism in Oregon. In 2010, when I was at Cascade AIDS Project, I started seeing that people were getting rid of really important posters and material. And I remember saying, don't, don't get rid of that, please. Just hold on to that. And they said, Judith, we can just scan it. It's not a big deal. And I said, no, this is very important. Just leave it in the boxes, okay? And that created a five-year journey. The first year, people would come and they would bring boxes and would hand them to me with tears in their eyes. Or mothers would just start crying and I would escort them into the back room and sit with them for an hour as they would gently show me things about their sons. And two years ago, I got a call and said, hey, do you want to help with an exhibit that's going to be happening at the Oregon Historical Society? And I said, of course. People came to it. The volunteers who worked there said we've never seen so many groups of people and they also said it was one of the most radical exhibits ever shown at the Oregon Historical Society. As an activist is that that's not why you do it. You might never see the end of some of these things, I'm sorry to say, but at least you can be a part of getting there. When we talk about this award as a legacy award, what Judith left and leaves for us yet and continues to leave is a legacy, a legacy of her heart, a legacy of her hard work, a legacy of her openness about that disease and everything that now surrounds it. She walked into a room and things changed. I think that's the story of her life. She walked into this world and the world changed. <laughs>